Yeah, very good morning, dear students. And this video lecture is in the series of the previous lecture that is on the chapter first, the portrait of a lady by Kushwan Singh. Today we are going to discuss the question and answers. The very first question from the book is the three phases of the author's relationship with his grandmother before he left the country to study abroad. And you know that the very first phase is childhood when he was living with his grandmother in the village. Second phase is uh, again the boyhood where he started going to city school and he shared a common room but uh, with his grandmother but she could not uh, longer help him in his studies and third stage is early youth when he went to university and was given a room of him separate room and the common link of friendship was snapped second question three reasons why the author's grandmother was disturbed when he started going to city school you know it very well that uh, the grandmother she does not like western science and learning second uh, the reason is she was uh, very much in pain to know that there was a there was no teaching of god and religions and third we can say that uh, she thought that the music because uh, the, uh, in the school music was taught to the author and he started taking interest in music and she thought it was only meant for the it meant for prostitutes and it is a taboo it is it doesn't meant for the decent people and gentle folk fine let's come to the third question question number two three ways in which the author's grandmother spent her days after he grew up when he started going to university she accepted her seclusion you know it very well how does she spend her day though she spent she accepted her seclusion without any complaint she accepted her loneliness first reason second reason is that she started spending her time while spinning the wheel and reciting the prayer and third she started spending her, her time while feeding the sparrows right the happiest half an hour of a day now question number four the odd way in which the author's grandmother behaved just before she died you know it very well just before her death the author's grandmother refused to talk to anyone uh, since you know she had uh, omitted to pray the previous night while she was singing songs of homecoming and beating the drum she was not going to waste any more time and she ignored their protests she lay peacefully in bed praying and telling beats this is how she uh, behaved before she died now next question question number five the way in which the sparrow expressed their sorrow when the author's grandmother died. You know, the sparrow, they came at the hundred of sparrow, they came to pay tribute. After the death of grandmother, they did not chirp. They did not accept the bed crumbs offered by the author's mother. Now, long question, talking about the text. The author's grandmother was a religious person. What are the different ways in which we come to know this? We all know this. The author's grandmother was a deeply religious lady. And there are many instances are given in the chapter. The very beginning, we get to know that she always used to count the bead of her rosary. She always used to recite. Her, her lips are always moving in the prayer in the in the temple. Also, when she used to escort the child, the Kushwan Singh to the school, she used to read scriptures and religious books. And we can see in the city also she accepted her seclusion. In the meanwhile, while while spinning the wheel, she used to pray. She used to recite the prayer. And one more instance we have at the end of the chapter that we get to know when she have the intuition that she is going to die. Her she is very nearing to her death when she accepted her demise. In that case also she stopped talking to anyone else. She wanted to pray. She didn't want to again. She did. She did not want to talk anyone. She wanted to spend her time, devote her time to the God. So she was a deeply religious lady, and there are many. There are many instances are given this chapter. Let's come to the next question. Describe the changing relationship between the author and his grandmother. Did they feel their feeling for each other change? This question you are easily answered that their relationship get changed. But how come and what were the changes? Because during his boyhood when he was in the school uh, in the village, then they went to city. What kind of changes has come? But what did their feeling change for either? This is the main important question. For this you have to read summary carefully, and apart from this you have to go through with the chapter. If you have any doubt, you keep noting it and you can ask me these questions. This long question you have to do in your English notebook. Whenever we'll be resolving back, we'll back to the school. I will see all the questions and answer in your copy. 
Now, next question is, would you agree that the author's grandmother was a person of a strong in character? If yes, give instances and show this. So you can say yes, I agree that uh, the author's grandmother was a person of a strong in character. How? That she was serious about her author's education. She could not adjust herself to a western way of education. We can say science and English education. She hated music and disapproved its teaching in school. Apart from this, she was a deep religious lady, we can say. Her lips was always moving in a silent prayer. She was always telling the beads of her rosary. She went to temple daily and reads the scriptures. And apart from this, we can say that um, she was distressed to know that there was no teaching of God in the school and holy books and the Kushwan Singh's New English book. Uh, as well as we say, she was a kind lady. She used to feed the dogs. In the village and the city, she took the feeding of sparrow. Although that uh, old in years and weak in body, she had strength of mind. Just before her death, she refused to talk to, any, to the members of the family as she had. She did not want to waste her time. She wanted to make up for the time last evening when she had not prayed to the God. She lay peacefully in bed, saying prayers and telling the beads of her rosary till she breathed her last. So, this is what the answer you can write for this. Have you known someone like the author's grandmother? Do you feel the same sense of loss with regard to someone whom you have loved the loss? Loved and lost. So, this is what according to your context, your own experience, you're going to write this answer. Now, next question is... Leave these questions. Now, if this one is... You have to take the third from this. The word hobble means to walk with different difficulty because the legs and uh, feet are in bad condition. Take the words in the box below that also refer to a manner of walking. So here you have to find a word that is uh, related to the manner of walking. So there are some words that is shuffle, stride, waddle, paddle, swagger, trudge and slog. These are the words related to the manner of walking. Because haggle is another word that is not related to the manner of walking. Haggle means uh, to dispute someone. And then we have another word, wriggle. Wriggle is a word used for twist and turn quickly. Right? Shuffle. Shuffle is a word that dragging your feet. We use to stop shuffling your feet. Do not shuffle. So it is a very bad way of walking while dragging your feet. Stride is again the long steps. The way uh, when you take long step while walking is called stride. Then we have Weddle. Weddle is uh, short steps. Then we have Swagger. Swagger means walk confidently or arrogantly. Trudge. Trudge is again used for the word for heavy steps. So these are the words being used in this. And this, this relates to the manner of walking. This is very good, uh, very good uh, vocab. You, it, it will improve your vocabulary. So you need to read it and learn it. And you have to do it in your decks, in your notebook. Thank you and have a nice day.